I just watched the first arc of every Yu-Gi-Oh anime for the first time ever. Now it's time to evaluate each one and place them on a tier list based solely on my opinion of these first arcs. Last year, I made a very similar video in which I ranked them by first episode, and soon I'll be ranking all of them as an entire series, with the goal being to document how my opinion is altered as I get deeper into each one. First, we'll talk about Duelist Kingdom since Duel Monsters is the Yu-Gi-Oh that most people start with, then we'll move forward in chronological order until I reach Go Rush, which debuted earlier this year. And finally, we'll talk about Season Zero. But before we get into that, I'm going to ask that you leave a like on this video and subscribe for more anime analysis videos. Also, let me know how you would rank each of the Yu-Gi-Oh anime. I'm curious to see how my list aligns with yours. Technically, I've already seen Duelist Kingdom in the 4Kids dub, but that was a long time ago and if you know anything about 4Kids, it's that they make a lot of changes. Since I'm watching everything in Japanese this time, I think it's fair to say that this really is my first time watching Duelist Kingdom. It starts when Yugi Muto, a relatively unknown duelist, defeats Seto Kaiba in a duel. Word spreads quickly because up to this point, Kaiba was widely considered to be the best duelist in Japan. This leads to Yugi receiving an invitation to the Duelist Kingdom tournament, which is being held by none other than the creator of Duel Monsters himself, Pegasus. In order to ensure Yugi's entry, Pegasus uses the Shadow Game power to steal the soul of Yugi's grandpa. Duelist Kingdom is being held on an island, so Yugi must travel on a boat with the other contestants in order to get there. His friend Joey also enters the tournament because he needs the prize money, and the rest of his friends sneak on the boat so they can watch the duels. Before they reach the island, Yugi has his precious Exodia card stolen and tossed into the sea. Once Yugi gets to the island, he climbs his way up the ladder with relative ease, until he is faced with Kaiba once more. Yugi loses because Kaiba plays dirty, Kaiba is defeated by Pegasus right after that and his soul is stolen, then, thanks to the help of another competitor, Yugi makes it into the finals and goes on to win the whole tournament. Kaiba and Yugi's grandpa are rescued, Yugi gives the prize money to Joey, and everybody lives happily ever after. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in A tier. I think it's really solid, way better than I remembered. In some ways it's a lot worse than I remembered, but overall I think it's a very good first arc. The only major problems I have with Duelist Kingdom are the duels drag on way too long, and the rules make little to no sense. Fusing Mammoth Graveyard with a spell card, and then launching that card into Blue's Ultimate to create a sort of cursed fusion, it's funny how when I was a kid, I thought that these were the best things about Yu-Gi-Oh, but now that I'm older, I think they're the most frustrating parts of it. And I wonder if it's because I know how to play the real game now, or just because I'm older. Either way, I'm still a big fan of this arc. I also like the way they handled Exodia. I remember when I ranked the first episodes, I said that Yu-Gi having Exodia was a problem, because he shouldn't have cards that powerful that early on. And, well, the cards get stolen and thrown into the ocean, so... Yugi no longer has a huge advantage when he plays. Yu-Gi-Oh! GX The Seven Stars When I was a kid, I did not like this anime whatsoever, so I didn't watch past the first couple of episodes. But after watching an entire arc for this video, my opinion has changed quite a bit. The first arc of GX is kind of all over the place. It begins when Judai Yuki, an aspiring duelist, enters Duel Academy by defeating Professor Kronos. Normally, professors are supposed to use a weak deck for the exam, but Kronos was mad at Judai for showing up late to the exams, so he used his personal deck instead, hoping to make quick work of him. It backfired hard though, because now almost everyone thinks Judai is the best duelist around, since Judai was the one who won. Because of this, Kronos spends the first half of the arc trying to get Judai expelled. The second half of the arc is when things get more serious. A group of duelists known as the Seven Star Assassins force Judai and his crew to participate in shadow games, with their goal being to acquire the three sacred beasts. These cards were considered so powerful that they were locked away and stored somewhere deep within the academy. Eventually, Judai and his friends are able to defeat all of the seven stars, but ultimately the cards are stolen by their leader, Kagemaru. Immediately following, Judai is challenged by Kagemaru to a duel. If Kagemaru wins, the true power of the sacred beast will be unleashed, and the world will be destroyed. Judai wins, and the cards are sealed away once more. Now, GX is going to be the most polarizing because half of its first arc is episodic slice of life. I honestly don't know why it's not separated into two different arcs. I use the Yu-Gi-Oh! wiki, by the way, to figure out which episodes to stop on so that I don't watch too far. And one thing I do like, 52 episodes, that's how many weeks are in a year. So the entire first season is just the entire first year that Judai is at Duel Academy. And I really appreciate that time moves at the same pace of the show as it does in the real world. Not enough shows do that. Like One Piece, they say that up to the time skip, that was all one year. But that's like 10 plus years of reading the manga or watching the anime. That just is too unbelievable. But as for GX, typically I avoid episodic anime, but I think GX did it really well. 
There were a lot of funny moments both during and outside of duels, like the duel with Chaz and Alexis when he's trying to propose his love, and then it turns out that duel is what gets the keys to be stolen by Kagemaru so that the sacred beast could potentially come back and destroy the world. I can't stress enough how funny that situation is. And somehow, they made the rival character the complete opposite of Kaiba, and it still turned out great. At first, he seemed like he would just be another Kaiba clone, but after he was defeated, he goes on a journey of self-discovery and basically takes the advice that Kaiba refused to hear from Yugi. And even though I prefer the first half of the arc, I gotta say, some of the villains in the second half were actually really good. Like Kamala, they really hyped that villain up by having her defeat both Kronos and Kaiser right before the Judai duel. Although I kind of wish they spread out those duels more so that there was more time to build up the tension. But I'll be making a separate video about GX where I analyze the entire series when I'm done. I'm almost done with that show. Subscribe if you want to see that. For now, GX is going in B tier. Now let's get up to speed with Yu-Gi-Oh! 5 d Yusei Fudo is a citizen of Satellite District, a city where its residents are forced to do hard labor for the neighboring New Domino City. Over the past two years, Yusei has been secretly building a D-wheel motorcycle so he can escape Satellite and take back what was stolen from him by Jack Atlas, his first D-wheel and his Stardust Dragon card. When Yusei finally manages to escape, he finds Jack waiting for him on the other side as if he was waiting there the whole time. Jack offers to give Yusei his Stardust Dragon back, but Yusei refuses to take it until after he's beaten Jack in a duel. Jack accepts, so they head to an empty stadium and begin their duel. Just before Yusei wins, their duel is interrupted by a mysterious dragon that appears seemingly out of nowhere and causes their D-wheels to fail. The duel is basically cut short and there's no official winner. Security shows up and takes Yusei to a detention center. After some time, Yusei is freed, but as soon as he retrieves his D-wheel, he is blackmailed into entering the Fortune Cup tournament. The winner of this tournament gets to face off against Jack Atlas for a chance at becoming the new king. Yusei makes it to the finals where he must duel Jack once more. During their duel, when both Red Dragon Archfiend and Stardust Dragon are summoned, Yusei and Jack are transported to another world. They see visions of their city being torn apart and they assume it's the future. They decide to finish their duel, believing that if they do, they will be returned to their own world. Yusei defeats Jack, they are transported back, and he is crowned the new king of Domino City. I'm putting 5Ds into A tier. The arc definitely lived up to the hype and I see why so many people consider it to be the best. The character designs are great, which is something I really can't say about GX. The same is true of the monster designs, and really I only had one issue. That is, 5D suffers from One Piece syndrome. Let me explain. In One Piece, there is at least one character in pretty much every single arc that dies horribly. In Skypiea, an old guy gets smote by God himself, but at the end of the arc, the guy is alive and well. Why? Because it's One Piece. The best example of this in 5Ds is when Yusei meets Saiga, a former pro duelist who quit after he caused his friend to crash while speed dueling. When he's telling Yusei about his story as to why he quit playing, it's heavily implied that his partner was either killed or paralyzed in an accident. Saiga even carries around a damaged card that once belonged to his friend, and he claims that his friend can no longer duel because of this accident. And to make things even worse, they show a flashback in which his friend crashes straight into a wall and explodes. What else are you supposed to take from that? Well, what if I were to told you that the guy actually jumped out of the vehicle and got away safely? That's right, there's a second version of the same flashback they show later, a few episodes later, in which the guy isn't even in the vehicle when it crashes. So it's deceit on a whole other level, at least one piece just sort of misleads you and then they show, oh, the guy's fine. But in 5Ds, they completely change the flashback the next time they show it. And it's like, oh, we showed you a fake one last time. This is the real one. The show has other ways of doing this too, like there's this funny scene with a guy named Bomer who's trying to avenge his family, who actually did die, I think. I don't know though, based on the example I just given, it's possible they're still alive, I wouldn't be surprised. But he gets interrupted by Yusei and it's like, why do you interrupt him? I don't get it. Because Yusei is supposed to be the stoic guy, why is he trying to protect the villain from his friend who he just made? It makes no sense. I get that it's Yu-Gi-Oh and they still want kids to be able to watch it, but if that's the case, then why even bother trying to come across as the edgy, more mature version of Yu-Gi-Oh? Duel Monsters was already a pretty edgy show. Anyway, still a very good arc. It doesn't detract from it that much, but it does hold it back a little bit, so I'm putting it in A tier. Yu-Gi-Oh's Exile is even more episodic than Yu-Gi-Oh GX, so I'm gonna have even less of a summary, but here we go. Yuma Tsukumo is an average duelist until, suddenly, a mysterious creature appears before him. This creature is called Astral. He tells Yuma that he needs to acquire all of the number cards in order to restore his memories, that way he can figure out why he was sent to Earth in the first place. And for the majority of the arc, they duel random people possessing these cards. About halfway through the arc, another number hunter appears and that part's really cool. Nothing happens of significance for a while, and Yuma becomes the legendary Super Saiyan at the end. Okay, I don't really like Zexel. It's not bad, it's just boring. Nothing interesting happens until the very end of the arc, and it's really not that interesting. 
I think it's got a cool premise. The main character is like Yugi, but instead of being controlled by the spirit of the puzzle, he is assisted by it. The problem is, Yuma isn't very likable, and none of the other characters in the show even do anything, unless you count Astral, but he's just a coach. He doesn't really have much of a personality. Although Kite is really cool, but we don't know much about him. But so far he's really cool, he's like Batman. Also the animation quality is way higher than the other shows, at least of the ones that I've seen up to this point. But not much else to say, D tier, it just feels like a waste of time to be honest. Arc 5 is the most simple Yu-Gi-Oh anime. There is a new kind of dueling called Action Duel in which people can roam around an arena. They also get access to action cards, which allow the players to do things like dodge opponents' attacks, and the players are able to physically interact with their monster cards during their duels. The main character is Yuya, and his goal is to be a performance duelist like his father. Sadly, his father disappeared right before a big championship duel while his father was the champion. This causes him to be branded as a coward and Yuya by extension. Fast forward three years, and Yuya is finally able to avenge his father by defeating the champion who his father allegedly ran away from. He does so using pendulum summoning, which he seems to have just invented out of thin air. This causes a lot of people to like him and want pendulum cards for themselves. Some guy who looks just like him starts causing trouble at another school. This causes Yuya and his school a lot of trouble. He ends up fighting a team battle to protect his school from being bought out by the other school, and he barely wins. The only reason he won is because his opponent withdrew from the match. And at first, Yuya is very upset, not just because he lost, but because his opponent is the only other person to use Pendulum Summoning. So he feels like what made him unique and the one thing that gave him an advantage in dueling is now gone. But it was a team battle, so his friends who lost their battles in the team duel, they get really motivated to get better at the game because they realize they almost lost their entire school just because of their inability to duel. Then Yuya realizes that everyone else is going to have Pendulum cards pretty soon, and he's going to have to actually get good in order to win from now on. I like the concepts presented in this show, but they fail miserably to execute the most interesting one, which is action duels slash field simulation. After the first two duels, it starts to lose its effect. Action cards function as just a second chance, like an extra draw. They can just occur randomly when you're about to lose. At first, it seemed like the characters would be constantly searching until they found one, but they pretty much just stand still the whole time like in regular duels until they need an extra card when they're about to lose or something. Sometimes players will try to prevent their opponent from getting an action card by either getting to it first or using their monster to block it, but most of the time they don't. Their first two duels were amazing, but after that, the duel field becomes nothing but a backdrop. There's a lot of potential here, so I'm still looking forward to continuing the series, but for now, it's definitely not up to the level of its predecessors. All in all, I'm putting it in C tier. Yu-Gi-Oh! of Reigns takes place in the near future where dueling is now done in a virtual space. This space is known as the Link of Reigns. The story centers around a hacker named Yusaku Fujiki, whose goal is to uncover the truth behind a traumatic event that was caused by the Knights of Hanui. The Knights of Hanui are a mysterious group of hackers who seek to destroy the Link of Reigns. Link Vrains is owned by a company called Soul Technologies, and when a mysterious creature known as the Ignis suddenly appears, all three parties hunt it down. The Knights of Hanui want to destroy it, Soul Technologies wants to study it, and Yusaku plans to use it as leverage against the Knights of Hanui. Of course, Yusaku gets to it first, and in doing so, he makes an enemy of the entire system. At first, Yusaku thinks that the Ignis is just an advanced form of artificial intelligence, but eventually he finds out that it is a living creature with free will and the Knights of Hanoi created the Ignis using the tragic incident that befell Yusaku long ago. They now want to destroy it because they view it as a threat to the very existence of humanity itself. I don't know if this is going to be controversial or not because I never hear anyone talk about Vrains, but I think it's better than all of the other Yugo anime by a long shot, so I'm putting it in S tier. And keep in mind, this is only based on the first arc of each Yu-Gi-Oh anime, so I'm not saying that Brains is the best Yu-Gi-Oh anime overall. I am saying that it has the best first arc. I'm only pointing that out because this is a long video, and I still get comments on my last video from people who clearly didn't read the title of the video or just didn't even watch it. Anyway, I like Vrains so much because it's the only Yu-Gi-Oh anime to have intelligent characters with realistic motivations and that don't always fall on the side of either bad or good. There's a lot of nuance to each character. Sometimes I legitimately questioned who the real heroes were. I know everyone likes 5Ds because they say it's the most mature Yu-Gi-Oh anime and in my opinion, 5Ds is edgy, not very mature. I'll talk more about it in a future video, but for now, this is my opinion. Vrains is the best, S tier. I can't wait to watch the rest of it. Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens is the first of what I like to call the Rush Duel era of Yu-Gi-Oh! anime. It begins when a grade schooler by the name of Yuga Odo invents a new form of dueling, Rush Duel. The purpose, as he puts it, is to create a less rigid and strict way to play. 
The key differences between this game and the regular game is every turn you draw until you have five cards in your hand and you can normal summon as many times as you want. In order to share his creation with the rest of the world, Yuga has to defeat a hologram duelist within a certain time limit. Yuga succeeds and is declared the one who can become king. This causes a lot of problems, particularly at Goha Corporation, the company in charge of dueling, because they view Rush Duel as a threat to regular dueling. There are also a lot of people who simply dislike Rush because it's different and new. It reminds me a lot of how people reacted to Pendulum and Link Summoning back in the day. At the same time, Yuga has become a target for those who seek to become King of Duels. This is because when Yuga defeated the Hologram Duelist, he was being recorded by one of his peers. When that information is leaked to Roa, the singer of a popular band, Yuga is challenged to a team battle, Yuga's crew versus Roa's band. If Roa wins, he becomes the owner of Rush and the new King of Duels. During their duel, the Hologram Duelist reappears to tell Yuga that if he loses to Roa, he will no longer have the right to become King. Yuga decides that he wants to win because if he is the King, then more people will challenge him and he'll get to enjoy more intense rush duels. Yuga wins and now he has a new rival. Okay, I understand it now. I understand the hate for Yu-Gi-Oh 7s. I actually watched this arc when it aired and I thought it was okay at the time. The changes in art style, tone, and grade school setting were not a big deal to me. I played Yu-Gi-Oh in grade school so if anything, this was more relatable. There were so many easter eggs that brought back memories of Duel Monsters too and it got me hooked on rush duels in real life. I figured the point of the show was to bring back casuals like myself by making a simpler version of the game, and it worked. But now that I've seen an arc from all of the other Yu-Gi-Oh anime, it's clear that Sevens is lacking what made the other Yu-Gi-Oh anime worth watching. It's not a coming of age story like Duel Monsters or GX, there aren't any interesting stories behind the monster cards like in 5Ds or Brains. Aside from the Rush Duel game itself, what does Sevens have to offer? I've already made a pretty thorough analysis on Sevens, so I suggest you watch that if you want to know more. But for now, I'm gonna leave it at that. F tier. Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush follows an alien named Udius as he learns to play Rush Duel. Due to an ongoing conflict, Udius was forced to leave his home planet. He now seeks a way to end the conflict using Rush Duel. Why Rush Duel? We don't know. Okay, Go Rush is the exact same as Sevens, only the premise is way better and everything else is way worse. All of the Easter eggs to classic Yu-Gi-Oh! are gone, and that's fine. But instead, all of the characters are carbon copies of Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's characters. They dumb down the game even further too, because the goal of the show is to teach Rush Duel to people who've never even heard of Yu-Gi-Oh! At least with 7's there was a little something in it for everyone, but Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush is literally made for 6 year olds, and for that reason, I'm putting it in Go Rush tier. I actually already made an analysis on the first arc of Season 0, so I won't summarize it here. I'm putting in S tier, it's the closest to perfect that a Yu-Gi-Oh arc can be. That's right, I know I said Vrains is the best, but this is number one. Vrains is the best spinoff, and Season 0 is my favorite overall. And that was my tier list. A full analysis of each Yu-Gi-Oh anime is coming, so subscribe if you want to see that. Thanks for watching.